the site of Clemson and Louisville just about set to get it started. Now Clemson won the toss and deferred their option to the third quarter. So Trevor Lawrence is going to have to wait as his team will have the ball second the first time this season that Louisville has opened with the football. And they have a very dangerous return man and Hassan Hall back deep to receive the opening kick. Shusen, Dan Orlovsky, Allison Williams. And Hall had a 100-yard kickoff return for a touchdown last week. He's not going to get a chance here. And, Dan, how about this defense that Louisville will face today for the Tigers? Well, remember the, the conversation about Clemson's defense was how, how are they going to replace the dominant unit that was last year with all those guys going to the NFL? Well, it's just transitioned from that defensive line, and now it's gone to the back seven. Their secondary and linebackers are so good. They're the third-ranked yards per game defense in America, and they're actually two points better this year than they were at this time last year. Six consecutive opponents held under 300 total yards. Ian Hawkins gets the game's first carry, and he goes backwards. So already a tackle for loss of one on first down for Clemson. Niles Pinckney made the stop. Jawan Pass began the season, really the second string quarterback against Notre Dame. He has now been ruled out for the rest of the year. Mikhail Cunningham was replaced by Evan Conley at quarterback. Last week when he got hurt, Cunningham able to rebound, and he gets the start today. On a bootleg here, flips one to 2-2 Atwell, who makes a nice one-handed catch. And it's third down and manageable. What about the keys for Cunningham? Well, to understand this Clemson's defense is to, to embrace that pressure's coming. And normally you throw into it. This week, throw opposite it because of the coverage behind. Continue to dominate play action. The best ACC play action team in the conference. Find Fitzpatrick and Dawkins in one-on-one. -on -one, and then understand. Use your feet the way you have the first half of the season so well. It doesn't have to be called runs. It could be in the pass game as well. Cunningham looks over with the play clock winding down. Third down and six, trying to get Louisville, or rather Clemson, to tip their hand defensively. It's a three-man rush. Cunningham out of the pocket, flips it to the sideline. He's got a first down hookup. You said find five and seven all day. Well, there's seven. Des Fitzpatrick with a big catch. It's an outstanding job by Cunningham of staying patient in the pocket. And then, okay, it's time for me to move, but keeping my eyes downfield. And a really good job by Dawkins of finding a soft spot on the sidelines. Moves the pile. Gets a little push from his friends and picks up five. And the plan at quarterback for Louisville is to go with Cunningham for the duration of this game. As long as he's healthy, he's been dealing with a sore right ankle, which could limit some of that mobility that Dan mentioned. It's such a strength of his. But Coach Satterfield said as long as he is healthy and able to play, he will be in there for the full game. If he can't go, of course, Conley will be ready. Well, Evan Conley did a terrific job in relief of him last week in the win at Wake Forest. And earlier this season against Boston College, had a great game as well. Cunningham to throw to the sideline. Seth Dawkins, he's got it for another first down. And that's what we talked about. Clemson brings pressure, but you want to throw away from it. Good job by Cunningham realizing the soft corner on the backside to Dawkins and getting that easy completion away from the blitz. Hawkins gets to the sideline. Stepped out of bounds. After a gain of about five more, James Skalski made the stop. Yeah, one of the things for Louisville on their offense that's going to challenge Clemson is you often hear the word eye candy or the phrase eye candy for an offense. Well, Clemson defensively cannot have a sweet tooth today because you're going to see so many different formations and so many motions and shifts that are going to stress your eye discipline and your rules as a defense. Clemson needs to be outstanding with it today. Play action for Cunningham. Heaves one down the field for Atwell. And it's picked off at the goal line into the end zone. Hauled in by Kayvon Wallace. Louisville had it moving offensively, but Cunningham.
hoists one into double coverage, and it's a turnover. We get some pressure early on Cunningham. They want to get a play action pass. Nice job avoiding it and then taking the shot downfield. And it looks like it goes right through Tutu Atwell's hands into Kayvon Wallace's lap. That is close to being a Louisville touchdown on their opening drive. How does this defense now respond for the Cardinals? In a win last week, they gave up 59 points in a win at Wake Forest. That is ETN. Up the middle. He's at midfield. Can they track him down? Eventually they do, but not before ETN gets it all the way down to the Louisville 32 yard line, a gain of 48. It's a nice start for your run game. <laughs> I'd say so. Yasir Abdullah saved the touchdown. Now it's Lynn J. Dixon in a tailback to the left of Trevor Lawrence. Dixon, he finds a crease as well. And he's down to the 25-yard line for a gain of seven. Man, outstanding job by the left tackle, Jackson Carmen, of moving the defender, and Etienne just following that block. The hole opens up, and you see some long speed by this really special back. And I think they need to get back to running the football, just calling some runs, handing it off to this junior tailback, and letting him impact this defense a little bit more to help Trevor Lawrence some. Lawrence with a pump fake. Across his body, high throw, tipped, and almost intercepted. J.C. Chalk, the intended receiver. He was wide open, and Lawrence forced him to climb the ladder. Third down and three. There's probably a little bit of room for Trevor Lawrence to run here. They're trying to get like a little fake to the bubble and find some seams. I like the fact that he goes to tuck the ball. That's a dangerous throw, especially early in the game. Thrown back across the field like that. Fortunately, that ball hits the ground, but I think he can run there. Flags down. Now it's going to be third down and eight. Ball start for offense, number 59. Five yard penalty, third down. Last week, Louisville was in a game at Wake Forest that looked like an arena football game. Yeah. They were just trying to get any stop they could at times. Can they get one on this first possession for Clemson? Well, I think for them, Louisville defensively, I'm, I'm going to double team T. Higgins and Justin Ross, number five and number eight, and then I'm going to make sure that someone else outside of those two guys beats me. They'll rush five. Lawrence steps up in the pocket, and down he goes. And Louisville does get the stop. Jared Goldwire, the first to get to Lawrence. Got some help from C.J. Avery. Louisville does just that. They doubled number five, T. Higgins, and number eight, Justin Ross, two of the better receivers in America, and brought some pressure. Left no safety back deep and challenged Clemson's offensive line to hold up a little bit longer. Outstanding job getting off the field. Uh, B.T. Potter missed a short field goal last week and drew the ire of Dabo Sweeney. He replaced him with Steven Sawicki, but said Potter is his long field goal kicker still. Well, this one from 51 to try and get Clemson on the board. And he redeems himself and then so Clemson. <laughs> I don't know if I can say that right now. Uh, that's ridiculous. It's a layup. I mean, it's just disappointing. He wasn't ready. Mine wasn't in what he was doing, but I'm disappointed with the last drive. You know, we should have we should have came away with points on one of those last two drives. But hey, we've had a great half. You know, Trevor just lost his mind for a second there. The kid made a great play, but he should have just thrown it away. Let's punt the ball. But just disappointed we didn't come away with points right there. Uh, so next time I'll go for it. Well, he didn't go for it as B.T. Potter last week, Dan, 
got an earful for not being mentally prepared in the mind of the head coach for missing from 24, but he puts him out there from 51, and he knocks one in on the road. Uh, there's also a little bit of reality that um, Dabo Swinney is taking advantage of any opportunity he can to make sure that his team stays fresh. You see the excitement between coach and kicker. Players need that, right? You gotta be hard on me, you gotta demand. That's part of the growth process of experiencing college athletics and being a college football player is how to handle situations. And it's a good coaching experience and good player um, answer by Potter. This is on Hall, turns the corner. And picks up about seven on first down. And Coach Sweeney told us he doesn't treat his kickers any different than he does any other position. He said, everybody made such a big deal about me chewing out my kicker, but when I chew out other guys, nobody bats an eye. And to him, he treats it just like everybody else. He said, we promote, we demote all the time. You have to have a winning grade. You don't have to be perfect, but you have to have a winning grade. And his body language, his focus was off for Potter, so he made a change to showing some confidence there with that long field goal and quite a response for Potter. He told us he would still be his long field goal guy as a backwards pass to Tutu Atwell is good for a first down. The other thing, Dan, that Babo Sweeney is up against is every game the rest of the season, his team is probably going to be a three-touchdown favorite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, they've gone from the hunted, or the hunter to the hunted, right? They are now, everybody's going to bring their best shot, and it's almost like me and Ham said, it's, it's harder to stay at the top than it is to get there. They're at the top, and now everybody wants a chance at them. And this time they bring down Hawkins behind the line. Another tackle for loss for Niles Pinckney. It'll be second down and 12. Our FPI gives them a lopsided advantage in every game the rest of the way. These are the three toughest remaining games they've got. And the finale against South Carolina, they're 81% to win that game based on our metrics right now. And that's the toughest one they've got left on the board. Cunningham. Up over the head of Fitzpatrick. Third down and 12. And this, uh, certainly the first seven minutes for Clemson is exactly what they wanted to do, right? Get Louisville to play from behind, and I know it's only 3 nothing, but they're not built to play from behind. And two, get them in the third and longs. They are such a run-dominant football team and play-action-based football team. They're not built to go third and 12. Uh, that might be... Clemson jumping off sides. Let's see if they were drawn off. Agrees, but that's a big difference. Third down and 12 now becomes third down and seven. Uh, absolutely offsides by Clemson. Nice job by Cunningham. Watch 35 on the right side right there as he crosses over. Good job by the offensive line moving. Here comes the blitz. High throw over the head of Fitzpatrick and incomplete. A free runner, James Skalski, buried Cunningham just as he let go of the football. There's a little bit of a change blitz. They brought Skalski right inside the tackle and the defensive end drops to cover that back that released. Fooled the tackle for a second. He delivers the big hit on Cunningham and that's exactly what Clemson loves to do on defense. Pressure, pressure, and pressure. Brett Venables will bring it anytime, anywhere. A spread out punt formation for Louisville. They've got Clemson shifting. Mason King, good-looking kick, Kendrick, bubbles the football, it's inside the five, it's at the goal line, there's a scramble for it in the end zone, who's got it? Both teams think they recovered. Touchback, according to the officials, Clemson avoids disaster. What a break for the Tigers. Disaster avoided. Kendrick going to try and field that punch should not. Lovely to go down at the bottom of the pile and recover for Clemson. 
including getting Windex and sponges and cleaning down the facility, which they did. He said, we wanted to make sure everyone realized nothing is beneath us as a task. We're going to start fresh, a fresh coat of paint all over the training facility. And they have moved this program forward, although they just moved Clemson out to their own 20-yard line as the Tigers avoid disaster, recovering a muffed punt in their own end zone. Travis Etienne breaks a tackle, breaks another, turns the corner, and gets about nine yards out close to the 30-yard line. You get the chance to see how special of a back ETN. You know, we when we hear Clemson, it's Trevor Lawrence, and it's those receivers of Ross and Higgins. This back is spectacular, and they need to go back to having him, their offense, kind of run through him in this run game. Play action. Easy pitch and catch to Justin Ross for a first down. I like that you called that easy. You know, when, when Clemson comes out in a three-by-one, trips to the field, put one receiver into the boundary, and the tailback is also into the boundary, with this RPO game, Trevor Lawrence is reading one guy. The safety that's into the boundary, closest to the sideline. If he goes back to the middle field, he throws it to that one-on-one -on -one receiver. If he stays there, ball gets handed off. It's a simple read for a quarterback. Trevor Lawrence takes a shot down the sideline for Ross and can't squeeze it through. Well covered by Chandler Jones. How about the scouting report on a Heisman favorite? Yeah, well, Louisville will play some different coverages. You can't assume anything, especially to the field. You got to be smart. They're going to drop and play a ton of guys to protect against the pass. You got to be patient against it. And then because of those some, some of those coverages, the middle of the field will be open. He's got a torch down between those hashes. Keeper for Lawrence. Long strides for the quarterback to the 45-yard line of Louisville. Brought down from behind by Yasir Abdullah, but he picked up 19. And, and listen, we talked to Dabo about this and Tony Elliott and Jeff Scott about their quarterback run game. I asked him, like, it's a little different with Trevor Lawrence. He said, no, that's our scheme. And I get it. I love that. But at the end of the play, slide. You don't need to be getting dragged and taken to the ground physically by any defense. Swing pass to ETN. And he's brought down after a four-yard pickup. Monty Montgomery came over to help on the stop. You know, it's a long season. And he's obviously as important of a part or piece to this team as anyone. But when you've got 15, 16 yards, go down. Don't take the chance of anyone dragging you down and rolling on an ankle or anything like that. I think that's a growth of his game that needs to happen. Another lane for ETA. Into the secondary and running through arm tackles again. Down to the 22 of Louisville. He picks up 20 more. Seems like Clemson offensively is just calling some runs. What I mean by that is we live in a world of RPO, run pass option, everything. There's always a pass play to every run. Sometimes you fall in love with that as a quarterback. Now it seems like they're just calling some runs, but they hand it off, and our receivers are going to block, and it's helping this offense right now. Here's Lynn J. Dixon. Two yards on first down. Dana Kennard made the stop as Travis Etienne's getting looked at by the trainers over on the sideline as he is off to a three carries for 77 yards start. Had a good average? Not bad. Not unlike when these two teams met last year in Death Valley. He had 153 yards on eight attempts last year when Clemson racked up 77 points. Lawrence sets up a tunnel screen. Justin Ross bottled up. Well, once again, can Louisville get a stop in their end and force a field goal attempt? We're about to find out a big third down coming up. Yeah, the play is there. It's just a bad throw by Lawrence and Ross. He's so far behind the line of scrimmage. So last third down, Louisville defensively said we're going to double Justin Ross and T. Higgins, 5-8. and eight. So as Clemson right now is a play caller, 
I'm designing a play for maybe Amari Rodgers. If you're going to take those two guys away, let number three, Amari Rodgers, work for some kind of coverage right there. He's at the top of your screen, closest to the tackle box as part of that trip's look. Lawrence looks the other way instead. Now shoots one towards the end zone, and it's intercepted at the goal line. Louisville gets a takeaway. Kane pass playing center field. And each team turns one over at the opposing team's goal line here in the first quarter. You got to credit Louisville on defense. Keeping eyes on the quarterback. Drop in in coverage. Throw it to me. Catch the ones they throw you. Get off the field again with a big turnover at home. For Jack Bagot. Has turned aside Clemson and given Louisville the ball back at their own 12-yard line. Looking for a crease is Hassan Hall. And he's out to the 19. I want to go back to this interception. This is our Mari Rogers right here. And as I play it, I want everyone to understand he's got a seam post. He has one job, come underneath this safety for go right there. Now, as he goes and gets deep into this route, watch how he drifts upfield and gives Fago the lane to go make that interception. He's got one job, come underneath that safety. Trevor Lawrence trusted him, and Amari Rogers, in, in a way, betrayed that trust. Isaiah Simmons. A loss of six. Amari Rogers, there's a lot of this offense is about communication, right? And I think there's a lack of communication that leads to that interception. Now pressure on their defense for Clemson. Hey, you guys got to bail us out, turn the short field back to us, and make sure there's no points off that turnover. Well, that tackle for loss by Simmons creates third down and nine. Play clock down to three. Cunningham, play clock at two, down to one, goes to zero. Not sure they got the snap off or was a timeout call. A flag is thrown for delay. Let's see if a timeout was called. Delay of nope. the game. Offense, five yard penalty, third down. What happened was Clemson decided to change what they were going to do. Hey, we're going to show you a zone, then we get to man, and as the sideline coaches, Louisville's like, okay, great, you're in man-to-man. -man. Let's call a man-beating play. It just too long, took too long for them to communicate. Now Clemson can get some unique pressures coming and play some zone behind it, force 15 yards. Cunningham from inside his five takes a shot down the sideline. Jump ball, and it's wrestled away by Des Fitzpatrick. He beat A.J. Terrell and bails out Louisville. They're out near midfield for the first down. There's those big ball receivers. Watch Fitzpatrick go up. Strong hands at the point of contact and make a big contested catch. Use his body a little bit to shield, shield off Terrell and go up, high point that ball and make a big catch. Already 52 yards for Des Fitzpatrick. He's working on a stretch of three straight 100-yard games. Hassan Hall into a pile up for a gain of a yard and a half. Jordan Williams made the stop for Fitzpatrick. He's the first wide receiver to do that three consecutive 100-yard games since Devontae Parker left. He's become a big play weapon for this offense. And they've talked about how much he's grown. He's grown a ton with his leadership, how well he's playing without the ball coming his way. And now he's starting to really get rewarded for all his effort. Cunningham lost the football. And it bounces right into the arms of that Clemson defensive line. Niles Pinckney has it land right in his lap. And it's a takeaway for Clemson. Their second as Justin Foster was all over Mikhail Cunningham. Clemson defense answers, brings a little pressure, you get... Niles Pinckney with what goes down as a fumble recovery as the ball fell right in his lap. It was Foster that put pressure on Cunningham. And they trade turnovers here at Louisville. Great field position for Clemson with a 3-0 lead.
Etienne fights his way back to the line of scrimmage. Picks up a yard. G.G. Robinson got through first for Louisville. The interesting drive to watch here, you know, because coming off the interception, how do you truly feel? This is a program now that is very confident in their players. But you just had that turnover, miscommunication, quarterback, wide receiver, whatever. I'm interested to see this play calling if they get back to some run game. Play clock down to five. Eight seconds to go in the quarter. Trevor Lawrence gets the snap off, looking at a three-man rush. He's well protected. He's going to fire one into traffic at the goal line. It's picked off again. This time it's Russ Yeast. Wow. Louisville's got it back. Another clip. Look at the numbers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys dropped in coverage, daring Trevor Lawrence to throw the ball downfield when he has a check down wide open right in front of him. That is a great amount of – he needs to grow in that area because teams are going to continue to drop guys in coverage thinking you're not patient enough to take check downs. Until he answers that question, they're going to keep doing it. Blitz picked up. Well done by Javian Hawkins to bail out his quarterback, Mikhail Cunningham. He scrambles forward and gets back to the line of scrimmage. I think he was looking for a flag on his intended receiver as well as he was trying to throw it down the seam to Higgins and then a conversation with the head coach. And you can read lips, and Dabo literally just said, you got your check down. And that was on tape, and defensive coaches are going to realize that and see it. Hawkins for a couple of yards. It'll be third down and eight. So of the two Lawrence interceptions, that one was on him. The first one you thought was on Amari Rodgers for not undercutting the safety. Yeah, the first one, again, is Amari Rodgers has to come underneath that safety. Was it an aggressive throw? Absolutely. Uh, that one is completely on Trevor Lawrence thinking, ah, oh, there's not a throw in the world that I don't love. And he's got to grow on being patient when teams are going to play coverage against them. Green to Atwell, and he lost the football. Is that ruled a completion and a fumble? Isaiah Simmons knocked it out, and they're going to give it to Clemson. Another turnover. Neither of these teams can possess the football. Five turnovers in the first 17 minutes or so. Isaiah Simmons driving on the football. Popped out. It looked like Tutu Atwell had caught the ball and taken two steps. Catch, one, two. That left hand, that left fist comes popping that ball out by Isaiah Simmons. Atwell coughs it up. And we'll step aside once again. 56 on the game clock. Just as we return, we hear the announcement that Tutu Atwell was bailed out by the replay booth. They rule this an incomplete pass saying he did not possess the ball long enough to become a runner and for this to be a fumble. I think it's because both feet kind of hit the ground and he's catching the ball at the same time, and then he goes to take his step, so maybe there's no, he did not have the ball long enough in his possession for us to deem that a complete catch. And it was ruled a fumble on the field, so that's a big break for Louisville. Marion Kendra being chased all the way back to his own 20-yard line by the punt of Mason King. And special teams does the job to flip field position in a big way for the Cardinals. A 59-yard punt. Well, let's take a look at today's unexpected outcome brought to you by Exxon Mobil. How about a road win for Louisville? The first for Scott Satterfield against a ranked team. There's Fitzpatrick with a 50-yard touchdown for the backup quarterback, Evan Conley. Wake Forest scored back-to-back -to -back touchdowns to bring them within three with 337 left. But then Conley on fourth and one goes 41 yards up the middle to salt the game away. A late touchdown made it a bit closer for Wake. But 62-59, Louisville wins a shootout. Travis Etienne, for the fourth consecutive drive, gets the ball to begin that drive and picks up a first down. Going back to that game for Louisville against Wake Forest, this defense was on the field for 102 snaps. Wow. Seven days ago, 102 snaps. So something to pay attention to is how does the wear of the game impact them third and fourth quarter and their conditioning. 
ATN cuts it back. And is brought down at the 31-yard line. Gary McCray was there. Jay Burns in on the stop as well. Yeah, and, and listen, I'm going to make myself very clear right here with Tony Elliott and Jeff Scott and Dabo Swinney. There's going to be, there should be a good amount of runs called right here. You, you know, you kind of send a message to your football team and, and even your quarterback. You can't be careless with the football like you've been. We're a really good offensive line and really good running back group led by ETM and Lynn J. Dixon. We're going to hand the ball off if you're not going to take care of it. Lawrence slings one to Amari Rogers on the sideline, and he breaks a tackle. Rogers, another gear. Dragged down inside the 10-yard line. It'll be first and goal for Clemson. A gain of 60. Louisville decided to pressure. It's a risk when you blitz against Clemson because they've got so many special receivers. Rogers, the nice job on the sideline breaking a tackle and a huge play for this offense. And down here, this is where Clemson really starts to use the quarterback run game close to this end zone. Lawrence dragged down behind the line. They try the quarterback run. And it goes nowhere. Almonte Caban comes through to make the tackle. Good job by that defense for Louisville of staying patient, reading your keys. This one-on-one -on -one matchup up here is what's to pay attention to. Justin Ross, you're going to leave him one-on-one -on -one if you do go throw it to him. Instead, it's ETM. It'll be third down and goal. C.J. Avery stood him up at the six-yard line. This is what I would do if I'm Louisville defensively. I'm, again, going to drop eight guys into coverage. I'm going to rush three. And the big thing is you got to tell your safeties, make sure nothing gets behind you the back part of that end zone where he could throw a ball up high to some of his big time receivers and force him to be patient with the football. It's a four man rush. Lawrence steps up back in the end zone. Climbing the ladder is the true freshman. Joseph and got him and he's got a touchdown. Nice job by Lawrence moving in the pocket, unblocked guy, two hands on the ball, and then a high throw up to Ingata, who had come across the back of the end zone, flashed a hand up, and you see the placement only where his guy can go catch it. And that's the part of the end zone in the touchdown area that I was a little bit concerned about for Louisville on their defense. Ngata was the player that recovered the ball in the end zone on the muffed punt earlier in the first quarter. So he saved a potential Louisville touchdown, and now he scores Clemson's first touchdown. This time it's Steve Sawicki on for the point after. He knocks it through, and the Tigers have a 10-0 lead. A couple of national championships. You've got 13 preseason all ACC players, and the next highest in your league has four. It's hard to live up to anything less than championship expectations. Yeah, the, the unrealistic expectations, right? They're so high, and I thought it was interesting. Dabo said, my job right now is to make a very loud world quiet for our players, and that's a challenge every week. Hassan Hall, dangerous return man. Gets loose. An excellent return just shy of the 40-yard line. He is out of bounds. Well, how about the weapon that Isaiah Simmons is and all the different ways they deploy him? Yeah, you can kind of put him off the ball on the line of scrimmage, back at a linebacker, out in the slot at receiver. You could put him on the edge. He could do so many different things. Out in space, he could take down any athlete. He is such an integral part of this defense because of all the places you can not only place him, but place him and he could play really well. And it allows Venables to do so much with all the other 10 guys. 
Well, we heard we were going to see both quarterbacks in today's game. And sticking to that plan is Scott Satterfield. As they have put Evan Conley in the game in place of Mikhail Cunningham. J.B. and Hawkins picks up a couple of yards on first down. But now the true freshman who was terrific in relief of Cunningham and led Louisville to that road win against Wake Forest gets a chance to play here. Yeah, I think the, thing, the biggest thing that watching him on tape and then talking to coaches about him is the confidence that he plays with. They, they don't change their game plan or change their play call or try and ease him in. They have complete trust that he'll go out and execute, and they believe that he's just as capable to run their offense as Cunningham. And Cunningham's not hurt. He's over on the sideline with the headset on, signaling in to Evan Conley the offensive plays as Hawkins picks up a couple of more. It'll be third down and seven. I think Louis, excuse me, Clemson's linebackers. James Skowski and Chad Smith and Isaiah Simmons are doing a really nice job against this run game of beating blockers front side and then running backside. Last third down, Clemson played man-to-man -man coverage and brought pressure. If you're Louisville, you have to anticipate, okay, one, I'm, this ball has to get out quickly. We can't hold up super long and get some kind of twist release to help against that man coverage. Here comes a blitz. One on one to the outside. There's Fitzpatrick coming back to help out the quarterback and pick up a first down. And the two of them get into it on the sideline as Fitzpatrick is shoved to the deck by Darian Kendrick well after the play was over. The crowd was looking for a flag. I love it. Pressure came off the right. Conley came backside to the weak part of that pressure one on one. Fitzpatrick physical. I love that. Bring a little energy to your offense. <laughs> that was worth a gold statue. <laughs> you got to submit that on your Emmy reel if you're Des Fitzpatrick. That was a terrific flop attempt. Didn't get the flag. And as Conley drops the throw again. Long pass up the seam to Atwell, and he drops it. 2 2. Atwell might have scored if he holds on to that pass from Evan Conley. We talked about the play action pass. Watch 2 2 Atwell speed. Speed and more speed. Sticks his foot on the ground, runs away. It's a beautiful throw by Conley. In perfect stride. Just got on him too quickly. Missed huge, missed opportunity for Louisville. They'll come back to that, though. This is a play-action team. They will come back to that stuff. But to knock off the number three team in the country, you got to make those. Vivian Hawkins into the secondary. And he easily picks up a first down, 15 yards. Skalski makes the stop. Good use of 2-2 Atwell on a fake reverse. It held the linebacker backside just for a second to allow that crease for the run. And if Louisville can get some run game going, they're the type of offense that wants to make small deposits, small run game deposits, one yard here, two yards there, a yard there, because they believe it will pay off with a big withdrawal in their play-action pass later in the game. Quarterback run. A broken tackle for Conley. He's got a first down. Get loose. Watch him put his, his right foot. Right there, right foot in the ground on Terrell. Fake pitch. Nice little athlete out in space. Might expect to see that out of Cunningham. Conley showing. Get enough athlete to go and run some option as well. We showed it to you earlier. His 41 yard scamper for a touchdown iced the game last week on a fourth down call at Wake Forest. Play action. Stepping up and taking off again is Conley. And this time he is buried after a gain of a yard and a half. Chad Smith got first. And let's see, there's a penalty marker down inside the five-yard line. I don't think the acting reel by Des Fitzpatrick is going to be needed on this one. He was basically tackled twice on this play. Oh, 
holding. Defense number one. Ten yard penalty results in a first down. That's Darian Kendrick. Fitzpatrick kind of draws that flag though. Like his willingness to run physically against press corners and fight for his route and fight for his leverage forces that corner to make some decisions at times and he was a little too physical. Darren Kendrick. If it comes in defensively, you gotta be really conscious. Louisville loves to get down in the red zone and run a kind of a trick play or a gadget play. You gotta have really good eyes down here. They'll stretch it with Hawkins. No gain on first down. The freshman defensive tackle, Tyler Davis, made the tackle. Second down and 10 from the 11. So Louisville can pick up a first down inside the one yard line. You've got two teams that offensively and defensively are used to success in this specific area of the field. We'll see which one wins out. How aggressive will Brent Venables be with his defense? Second down and 10. Bootleg for Conley. And he's going to throw this one away. So that time Clemson played coverage, Dan, and it worked. It was really good eyes. Louisville tries a little bit of a trick play. They wanted to fake it to the running back and sneak him all the way out to the back corner of the end zone. Clemson stayed back defensively, didn't buy into it, and a good job by Conley throwing that ball away. Both good plays by teams there. It's third and goal right here. I I've got to anticipate if I'm Louisville, okay, Venables is going to come after me because he's a, he's a pressure-based coach. And you've got to think of something that can be a zone-based blitz, a high-low to a back corner of the end zone. Here comes that pressure off the edge. Conley gets away. It's a check down nowhere near the end zone to Jordan Davis. And it will be a field goal attempt, you would think, to get Louisville on the board. Here comes Planton Creaky to try and make this a seven-point game. Creaky from 28. Inspiration, what she went through for me, what she's done for me, I can't even explain how important it is, and we thank her for all she has done to sacrifice, not just for her son, but for our country. Now, well put, Allison. What sacrifice to miss so many big chunks of your child's life and experiences that we all take for granted. We are in her debt, to say the least. A chance now for the first time for us to check in with Cassidy Hubbard. Thanks, Bob. A performance above brought to you by Jersey Mike Sub. South Carolina coming off their upset over Georgia with a 10-3 lead on number nine Florida until Kyle Trask finds Jacob Copeland, who splits the defenders and gets in for the 37-yard score. Tied up at 10 over on ESPN. Bob? Well, Cassidy, we've got another team in a bit more of a tussle than maybe we expected on the road as Clemson, number three in the nation, up by only a touchdown against Louisville. Starting at their own 25-yard line. Trevor Lawrence checks one down to Lin J. Dixon. He's got nowhere to go. Lost four. Boozy Whitlow got there first for Louisville. And Whitlow looked like he was blitzing and then saw Lin J. Dixon peel on a route and he just went with him. Seemed like a nice instinctual play. And now this is where Louisville feels like, okay, we can get some stuff going with our unique type of coverages in, in, in different types of looks that we could present Trevor Lawrence. Quarterback draw. Lawrence right up the gut. Flag thrown well after the play was over. He's a couple of yards shot of the first down. Let's check the call. Holding offense, number 74. 10 yard penalty, second down. 
Watch 74, John Simpson right here. And really when Lawrence breaks away, right there, you're gonna see him kind of drag number 57 for Louisville down. And that's where the flag comes in. Dana, Dana Kennard right there for Louisville's defense, 57. His effort chasing Trevor Lawrence forced that flag. Try to get his team set. That forces a timeout to be called on ESPN. ESPN Deportes and the ESPN app. Sam Donald back for the Jets and lo and behold, all of a sudden their offense looks Everyone's capable. Better. Shovel pass to ETN on second down and long. And now it will be third down and 13 for Clemson at their own 22 yard line. We come up on three and a half minutes to go in a surprisingly low scoring first half where there has been a ton of turnovers. Boy, Brian Brown would love one here. And he's done an outstanding job of messing up some of his calls. The big thing on third down has been doubling Justin Ross and T. Higgins and seeing someone else win one on one in their coverage. Three man rush, so they drop the eight. It's a check down to ETN. And he comes up well short of the first half. C.J. Avery with another stop. And so with three minutes to go in the half, Louisville will get the ball back. Brian Brown won again, played some soft zone, kept eyes on thinking, okay, they might try for a screen here, and a good job allowing his players to see it, and then trigger on the football. First half where Clemson has only scored 10 points. This is their first punt. They turned it over several times deep in Louisville territory. And it's a wobbly kick at that. It takes a Clemson hop. And rolls out of bounds inside the Louisville 30 yard line. Back in 30 seconds. It's still Evan Conley at quarterback for Louisville. They'll go play action here. And he's going to swing one of the sideline, trying to drop it into 2 2 Atwell. And he gets hammered underneath the table on the sideline for Clemson. And somehow he held on to the football. They're going to give him the catch out near midfield. A gain of 19. He took the table down. And now they're going to go over and make sure Tutu Atwell's okay. He is hurt. And it is amazing that he held on to that football. Great catch on the sideline by Atwell. You see toe tap right on the sideline and he's gonna go right into a table. Incredible catch, but watch this table. Ouch. Oh, his neck bent back as he hit the edge of the table right in front of the wireless communication system on the sideline for Clemson. now on the Louisville sideline what was able to get up maybe in Hawkins nowhere to go lost to Justin Foster there to make the tackle and there's a flag down as well taking the tackle for loss and the down. Dabo Sweeney takes the penalty. That'll make it first of 20. Always take the penalty. Always take the penalty. Because, I mean, even if they have a good productive play that's five or six yards as an offense, you're still thinking second and 15, second and 16 potential. Yeah, the only reason I was thinking you might take the play there, time. A, a tackle for loss, and B, inside of two minutes to go in the half, sure. you only have two timeouts left. You may not be able to get the ball back. Conley, trying to buy some time. 
He'll throw it away over the top of Fitzpatrick with K.J. Henry all over him in the backfield. Back to Cassidy. Bob, and now for today's All-State Mayhem moment, maybe the mayhem moment of the season. After a touchdown put Oklahoma up 28-7, the Sooner Schooner goes down. Everyone appears to be okay after a quick cleanup. They're back to playing in the second. Bob, Dan, back to you. Boy, that's a scary scene as well. Glad to hear everyone's okay there. 126 to go in the first half here in Louisville. Doing Clemson a favor by stopping the clock for them before second and 20. And now a false start's going to be called on the right side of the offensive line. Offense, number 60. Five-yard penalty, second down. And it's Tyler Haycraft, the right tackle. Coming up at halftime, we'll check in. It's the Capital One Halftime Report. Florida, South Carolina in a tight one. Miami and Georgia Tech going back and forth as well. And we'll preview the whiteout game tonight in Happy Valley. That will be a seat. that would be awesome. We've, uh, we've had the chance to see Penn State this year and how good they are really on top to bottom on their roster. I think Louisville needs to be real conscious of running the football here and forcing Clemson to make a timeout. We're going to try and throw. Conley gets to the sideline. And he'll go out of bounds. And again, that will stop the clock for Clemson without them having to use a timeout. And 2-2 Atwell is out of the injury tent, and he's going to get back in the game. Tough. Kid from Miami, only 5'9", 150 pounds. But an integral part of this offense, and you, you get the, the chance to see his toughness on tape. No surprise he's back out there. Here comes pressure for Clemson. From Louisville, i got to try to think of maybe a screen. It's somewhat of a safe throw. If it doesn't go anywhere, still force Clemson to call a timeout. And if you can attack that pressure and take advantage of it. Conley eats it. Isaiah Simmons brings him down. And now you'd have to think Clemson will call a timeout from their sideline. It looks like they will. Juice Simmons for a little bit of a... Mason King has boomed a couple of punts. This is his third here in the first half. And now it's Amari Rogers back deep to receive the kick. End over end. And hops out of bounds inside the 25-yard line. Still with plenty of time for Clemson. A minute five on the clock, Dan. End of timeout for Trevor Lawrence. I think the big thing for Clemson and Trevor Lawrence offensively here is okay. We have to start with a completion. I'm not trying to take a shot down the field or anything. And if if I'm Dabo, before I break this huddle, I'm going, Trevor, be patient with the football. Just move it methodically down the field for us. The big throws will come when the defense gives them to you. Let's start with the completion. Three-man rush. And there is the completion up the seam to Rodgers. Of course, that will stop the clock, at least for the moment, where they first down picked up. Only cost them six seconds. Good. Louisville plays some soft zone, get the ball out timing, make them get out of zone coverage. Now a four-man rush. Lawrence under pressure. Sidearms one over the middle to ETN. And he's got another first down. Still on his feet. Dragging tacklers into Louisville territory. Now this is what happens when you're six foot five and 220 pounds. Take a shot, get the ball in your hands. But I love the fact that he found the check down. No one else was open. Good start to this drive by Lawrence. Still a timeout for Clemson. Coming up on 30 seconds to go in the half. Lawrence, long throw over the middle. And he's got a hookup down to the 25 yard line to Justin Ross. A gain of 22 more. So well inside field goal range. Dabo Sweeney wants his team to be aware of that clock. It's probably time to spike the ball here. And they will clock it with 17 seconds in the half, still preserving that timeout. See what a couple completions do. You get a completion on first down, you're feeling good. Another check down, a beautiful route by Ross right there against pressure. And now with 17 seconds left, you still have your timeout. I want a ball that has the chance to go down to the end zone here, take a shot, but also something that 
If Louisville doesn't give me that chance in play zone, I can use the whole access to the field. Lawrence extending the play with the clock winding down. He's going to heave one. A jump ball in the back of the end zone. Is it caught by Ross? It is for a touchdown. Trevor Lawrence throws it up for grabs. And Justin Ross is there to make the play. I told you, man. Just kept him going towards the end zone. Watch Ross here. Throw the hand up. And then the elevation. And he gets that left foot coming down. T. Higgins is the one with the basketball background. But Ross is the one that goes up for a big basketball type catch. And remember, Louisville lost the toss. It was Clemson that deferred their option to the third quarter. So the Tigers score a touchdown here, and they'll have the ball after halftime. Must be nice if you're a quarterback to throw one up to a six foot four receiver that can go make a play like that. You're probably thinking, yeah, it's good to be lucky. Listen, it ends up being a touchdown for Clemson. Great play, Justin Ross. It was not a smart decision by Trevor Lawrence there in that situation to just throw that ball up for grabs. This was a lower scoring game than we expected it to be. How surprised are you that Louisville's defense has been able to hang in there with Clemson as much as they have? Well, it's certainly a surprise. You know, they've done a nice job of forcing Trevor Lawrence into some mistakes. I would also say that Trevor Lawrence has been impatient with the football and tried to manufacture points for their offense. And I think that's part of his growth process is he needs to get better at that. But credit Louisville defensively, scheme-wise, for changing some things up. And then their players have just made some plays as well. Listen, I, I talked about that. That last touchdown, yay, Ross. It could easily have been an interception, right? I mean, that thing was thrown up for grabs, and Ross, being six foot four and an incredible athlete, just went and made the play. Let's take a look at Clemson's playoff stats based on the All State playoff predictor. And this is a team that dropped from two to three last week in spite of a 45 to 14 win over Florida State. Still, if they run the table, you have to think they're going to be in the playoff. How would they not be as an undefeated team? And RFPI puts them at 65% to get in. Yeah, I think that would be the shock of the country this year in college football if, if Clemson did not make the playoff. Um, and everyone talks like, oh, the ACC. And I get that, that it's not other conferences, right? But there's also the, the reality that Clemson cannot have a mistake. They cannot have a slip up at all and afford taking any kind of loss because of the conference. That will take us to the half with Clemson on top by two touchdowns. After the break, it'll be the Capital One halftime report. Don't go away. There's so many great plays from him in the first half, but also those two interceptions, one miscommunication and one just being impatient. So for me, I yeah, there's some ammunition out there, but I want to see them just come out and have a really clean half of football on offense. And if they do that, everything else will take care of itself. And Louisville missed some chances to put points on the board themselves in the first half. 2-2 Atwell had a ball at the goal line go through his hands. That resulted in a pick and also missed what could have been a running touchdown as well as got it. Has a pretty good return to start off the second half for Clemson as we take a look at this afternoon's Pacific Life game summary. Travis Etienne got things started for Clemson, but they couldn't finish drives in the first half. Yeah, their run game was really productive. Clemson got a little bit impatient with their play calling, I would say. And we saw Lawrence force an interception, a great play down in the red zone, moving against pressure and up throw up high to Ngata. And we saw another interception as well. So some good and some bad. And that's why I say I want to see some clean by this offense. Play action. And an errant pass thrown by Trevor Lawrence. Well behind the intended receiver, Frank Ladson. Guys, Scott Satterfield mentioned a lot.
lot of the things you just did that they gave up a lot of yards defensively but they're in this ball game because they kept them off the board with the turnovers that's really what's kept them in the game so far but he said offensively we've got to do a better job moving the ball we will see both guys at quarterback he did like the way Conley was able to move the ball and he said we have to hit explosive plays to get back in this game well, there's a screen to Amari Rogers and a chance to get a stop on third down for Louisville to start off the third quarter and also worth noting there's number 17 Dorian Etheridge heading back to that defensive huddle he was suspended the first half targeting called last week in the second half against Wake Forest he is now back on the field be a big addition to them certainly to help their run defense you know third down is something Louisville had some success early on with it and then they played some soft zone I think they got to go back to doubling Higgins and Ross they're gonna bring a blitz here Lawrence finds a crosser in Justin Ross and he's brought down well short of the first down so it's a three and out to start the third quarter as Cornelius Sturgill was there to make the stop on Justin Ross yeah I mean you, you have to feel outstanding if you're in Louisville starting this second half you know it started on first down with Lawrence you know misread an RPO for their offense they run to the ball on second down and now get off the field on third down because of their coverage and also denying Clemson with terrific field position yeah. to start off the third quarter. Get that offense at their own 40-yard line. You're expecting points. Spires with a moonshot kick and in traffic. Rajay Burns is able to haul it in. Let's take a look at our Aflac trivia question. Duck was taking a coffee break. We got him out of the parking lot, though, to ask you how many teams from the state of South Carolina has Louisville beat? You got to really, like, find the, the words in, in the weeds <laughs> to get that answer, folks. <laughs> Don't take it for just surface level value. Dale Cunningham back in at quarterback to start off the third quarter as Hawkins goes up the middle for five. So what do you make of the quarterback flip-flopping for Scott Satterfield? I'm never a fan of quarterback flip-flopping, but that's why coach is coach, you know. And I think as long as you're honest and clear with these players and tell them that we're planning on it rather than this is punishment, it's a lot easier to manage. But the fact that you don't have to change your offense for either of them is a big deal. Here's Hawkins again, gets to the sideline, gets a first down and more. So that's a positive for Louisville, but Allison, how about a negative for Louisville on the injury report? Yeah, a tough loss for them. There will be without running back and dynamic kick returner Hassan Hall for this second half. He was injured at the end of the first half. A leg injury will keep him out of the rest of the game, so that's definitely a significant loss for them. And Maurice Berkeley only has four carries this season. He would be now the primary backup behind J.B. and Hawkins. So you'd have to think Hawkins is just going to be a workhorse in the second half with no Hassan Hall. There he is again. Jump cut gets to the left and does a really good job to improvise five yards. You see a little of the talent there by Hawkins. The vision, the press, and the cutback, which is a part of this offense, is trying to get defenders running side to side and then find some cutbacks. They've had some success in some of their run game. I want to see if they'll be stubborn and hard-headed with continuing to call runs. Cunningham takes a shot for Atwell over the middle. He bobbles it, and it's in and out of his hands. He couldn't hold on. Kayvon Wallace got him around the collar as Atwell tried to haul in another deep ball. It's the same one Atwell had dropped before. Great play by Kayvon Wallace right at the point where Atwell's about to get one hand on the football, gets home. The play before that they had run that when Conley threw it to Atwell, he led him across the field. That time Cunningham threw it a little bit upfield. And that allowed Kayvon Wallace to close. So third down and five. Louisville still substituting, and there's 10 on the play clock. Mikael Cunningham's looking over to the sideline, trying to get the play called in. Five on the play clock. They get it off, and they'll try to run for it with Hawkins. And he's going to come up short by about a yard. So it'll be fourth down and a yard and a half for the Cardinals on their side of the 50-yard line. Down by a couple of touchdowns. 
Is the offense going to stay on the field for Louisville? They are. How about this early risk in a two touchdown game to go for it to start off the third quarter? Well, I mean, I think what they're going to do is what they're going to get up to the line of scrimmage and see, because they've got up to the line so quickly, see what Clemson is going to do defensively. Clemson's going to play some man to man coverage. And I think you can use Cunningham's speed out on the edge in an option opportunity. Play clock winding down. They will snap the ball. They will go for it. And they will not get it. Not even close. Javian Hawkins right into the heart of that Clemson defense. And Brent Venables D gets a takeaway. It like the actual play call of going right at Clemson. I wanted to see the ball out on the edges with an option. So starting in plus territory now, Clemson with ETN. Still on his feet, driven back after a gain of eight. Yeah, it's one thing to go for it on your side of the 50 early in the third quarter of a two-score game. But how in that spot, if you're Louisville, as we have an injured player on the field, are you thinking our strength here is to go up the middle of the heart of the Clemson defense? Your strength offensively is your speed, speed out on the edge. Yeah. And, and that might be the first, right, like questionable decision that Satterfield ha had in, in his young tenure at Louisville is, is aggressive versus reckless. And I felt like that was a little reckless for Louisville at that moment. John Simpson, the left guard, was just helped off the field for Clemson. And they've got it second down and two after the takeaway on downs. And it's a mandatory touchdown drive for Clemson. Like, you just got outstanding field position started the second half. It's mandatory going to get six. ETN again. First down and more. Inside the 30-yard line. And, guys, Travis ETN now over 100 yards on the day. And what a performance by him. And you remember just a few weeks ago against UNC, Coach Sweeney really disappointed with how he played. He said he was terrible. He took the day off. He wasn't running with any sort of urgency. So Sweeney says they gave him a little Robitussin, a little NyQuil, and then he got some sugar against Florida State. He came out big, 127 yards in that game and over 100 here today. He's definitely responded. There you go. Just tape an aspirin to it. Lawrence on a keeper. One on one, out on the edge. And Louisville rallies to the ball after Russ East got him around the ankle to slow him up. It's a gain of only one. I said it in the first half, and I'll say it again. He's a special player, 16. And you want him to make sure that he's upright. And at some point, you know the play is dead. You, you, and, and getting wrapped up with the ankle there, you feel pressure coming, bodies coming. Hit the ground and don't take any extra shots. Lawrence avoids a sack off play action. Long shot to the sideline, the toe tap for T. Higgins out of bounds, incomplete. Couldn't get a foot down. Placement by Lawrence right on the edge. And Higgins, like that. The left toe just tops out of bounds. He actually had an easier throw. Guy that was open. Never pass up an open guy to get to a guy that you think would be more open. I think Trevor Lawrence will want that back. So third down. Clemson's been stifled by this Louisville defense with their changing of coverages. Well, they're going to take a look again at the T. Higgins play. As both feet came call on the field, was held up. Higgins was out of bounds. Third down and nine. All day to throw for Lawrence. Now being chased from the backside. He's going to try and run. And gets shoved out of bounds well short of the first down. So another good job by the Louisville defense to deal with big-time field position for Clemson's offense to get a stop and hold to a field goal attempt. I think you got to love on the Louisville defense. And, and, and not only just their players, but their defensive coordinator as well. Brian Brown has done a nice job. He won that battle there playing cover two man, two high safeties, man underneath to get your defense off the field. So this will be Steven Sawicki. As he's going to try from 44, BT Potter made one from 50-plus in the first half. And Sawicki pulls it well left. So it's still a two-touchdown lead for Clemson as they come away empty. Can the offense for Louisville have the defense hold this game and continue to give them a chance. Dan, feels like a crucial drive, this possession for this offense. Yeah, very much so like, okay, coach, we got you. You, you risked it, it didn't pay off, we'll, we'll get your back.
And Cunningham sails this pass over the head of Des Fitzpatrick. Last week against Wake Forest, 59 on the board. And they've scored only three today. The turnovers haven't helped this Louisville offense. They've run the ball decent, though. You got, they've got to continue to pound that football and then make some plays in their play-action play game. Hawkins makes a man miss of the backfield, but that gets gang-tackled after a gain of a yard. So now it's third down and nine. Logan Rudolph made the stop. They've had some success on third down to get into trip sets and throwing backside to the single receiver. Now they're in a two by two. You gotta be thinking Clemson's gonna play some man coverage and come after you. Isaiah Simmons is lined up on him, 2-2 two -two Atwell. Now Wallace is coming over. Get something down the middle of the field. Cunningham, it's gonna float one up the seam. Incomplete in between Atwell and Dawkins. I'm not sure of the two who that pass was intended for. But again, after your defense gets a stop, the offense for Louisville goes three and out. Yeah, Clemson blitzed everybody and just played man-to-man -man coverage. Cunningham just picked the wrong side. He's trying to throw that ball to Atwell up the seam. Usually that ball is driven for those seam route runners. He's trying to throw it up over the top like he's playing outside receiver. And if he had worked the other side, he would have realized he had Devontae Pete wide open down one of those seams. And this is where the character of this Louisville team is getting tested. Because this team would have folded last season and been non-competitive if the game continued to go this route. But Scott Satterfield's trying to change the culture. As King gets off a wobbly kick, takes a great cardinal bounce, and it's picked up by Amari Rogers on the hop in traffic. And now flags out as we've got a fight away from the ball. A couple of players at the bottom of that pile were going after it, and there were punches thrown. This gets ugly right at the left side of the screen. That's Andrew Booth. That's the Clemson player on top, and that is a full-on punch on Trinnell Troutman. That's a couple of defensive backs going after one another, and let's see how they sort this out. So it looks like Booth's headed to the locker room. He's already been kicked out of the game. Starts at the line of scrimmage, right at the bottom of the screen on the hash marks right now. Here comes a shot there, another shot there. And Booth just loses his cool, throws him to the ground, and then this is where it gets ugly. Completely uncalled for, not okay. Should be gone from the football game. And he is. I also wonder what the goal is for a football player to punch a guy in the helmet. Both on the receiving team. During the, during the kick. Holding, receiving team, number 23. That penalty is half a distance to the goal from the end of the kick. After the play, a sportsmanlike conduct. Receiving team, number 23. That penalty is half the distance to the goal. Number 23 is disqualified. I think it's a nice job by Troutman as well, who's... You know, there might be some people at home like, oh, look, he's getting punked. Keeping your cool in that moment and not hurting your football team is something also to be talked about. Booth obviously lost his cool, and for a moment, hopefully he doesn't represent himself the right way, but we got to credit Troutman at the same time for maintaining his composure in a really not good situation. So both penalties, after they are both enforced half the distance to the goal, Puts Clemson at their own seven-yard line. <laughs> and 
And Jay Dixon to the 10. Ross Yeast made the tackle. It's also a really good moment for both football teams to lean on leadership. Some veteran leadership of getting everybody's composure back. What happened, happened. We now, if you're Clemson, we got to go on a drive. And if we're Louisville defensively, we got to find a way to get a stop here and get a short field. But it'll take leadership. NJ Dixon again. He's going to go down behind the line. The ball pops out. It's loose. They'll say he was down. The ball squirted free, and the Louisville defense was set to pounce. Dorian Etheridge made the tackle, and now it's going to be third down and 11. It's a great job by Goldwire getting some push, and then Etheridge finding a seam. No hesitation. The ruler on the field had the runner was down prior to the fumble. The previous play is under further review. There can be clear recovery if they rule, even after the whistle blew, that that should have been a fumble, but it seems clear as day that Lynn J. Dixon, his knee hit, his elbow hit, and then the ball popped out. So very clearly, it seems like the call that was made on the field was correct. I mean, looks like he's down there. You see his left knee down, elbow down, ball still in hand, pops out when he hits the ground. It's interesting, though, because this is something to pay attention to, because we don't think this is going to get overturned. But these are extra timeouts for both teams as well, and Louisville has almost used them better. They've How last, so? Well, last third down, it gives you a chance to get together and go, what has worked for us defensively? And they went to a two-man defense, which is something kind of like a double team, and that was successful in the first half. So now they get a chance to get together again. And so if you're Clemson in your huddle, you're going, what are they doing against us? And, and what's something that we can get to? After further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Be third down. So it's third down and 11, back at the six-yard line. And for Louisville's offense mm -hmm. to get some points on the board and get back on track, you almost feel like this is one of those must-stops for your defense. This is a spot where if you get a stop here, you should get the ball back near midfield, mm -hmm. and you have a short field opportunity. Yeah, and big, that, that would be a, a big deal. I think that you got to put Higgins on one side, Ross on the other side, and you got to tell Amari Rogers in the middle of the field, listen, if those guys are going to get double teamed, you got to win down the middle between the hashes. Lawrence, quarterback draw. Right up the middle for a first down. Trevor Lawrence does it himself, and the perfect play call from the Clemson sideline. He picks up 20. And this is why it's a perfect play call. They did exactly what we were talking about. They put five and eight Ross on the outside. You go double team them. No one is left in between the hashes because it's man-to-man -man coverage. You beat one guy, the linebacker, and you've got plenty of space. ETN. Off to about the 34-yard line. You know, talking to Dabo Swinney earlier this week about the one-point win against North Carolina. And he made an interesting point. People looked at that as a negative. They yeah. dropped from number one to number two in the country. A loss almost, in essence, to a team that they're much better than. He said, no, I loved it. It was the first time I was in the fourth quarter with Trevor Lawrence at quarterback, and we weren't winning by 20. As he hands it off to ETN here, and ETN gets popped after a game of three. He said, I knew I could trust Trevor Lawrence, but having said that, I hadn't seen him in that kind of a spot. You have to figure at some point, you're going to play close games in the fourth quarter with your quarterback, and you need to see him under fire, and he saw him that afternoon. Because if you remember last season, they were on the road against Texas A&M, and they went to Kelly Bryant in the, the late in that game to kind of secure it, and so it was a really good... Hey, what is this kid made up in the fourth quarter moment for this offense? There he goes again. Two yards. C.J. Avery and P.J. Ambanasor combine on the tackle. One, Furman, all the way back in 1973. They have played Clemson five times head-to-head -head as members of the ACC, and they've lost all five. The fighting Ingle Martins. <laughs> Second down and eight. ETN. 
about four yards shy of a first down. C.J. Avery cut him down at the 45-yard line. So another chance for Louisville defensively to get a third down stop. And this is really, as we get it later into this ball game, this is this cat and mouse game between both coordinators of who's going to make the right call in the right situation. Louisville's had some success for double that last third down. Clemson seemed to kind of find a recipe against it. They've got trips into the boundary now. These three guys up top. If you get one-on-one -on -one at the bottom of the screen, he's going to work up top now to the trips. Lawrence looks that way, finds a target over the middle, and it's broken up. J.C. Chalk, the intended receiver, C.J. Avery, that time of play in coverage. And for a Louisville defense that gave up 59 on the road to Wake Forest last week, they have only allowed 17 to Clemson, the number three team in America, and they get another stop on third down. You got to credit Brian Brown, defensive coordinator for Louisville, who continues to dial up the right defense at the right moment. They didn't want to single up the receiver back there, Play double team to him, coverage up top, enough bodies, and he gets off the field again. Rugby style kick for Spires as he lets the coverage get downfield and angles it to the sideline. And it is brought down at the 21 yard line by Kayvon Wallace. Only a 34 yard punt. As we take a look at this week's college football playoff rankings, brought to you by AT&T. Clemson with a two-touchdown lead. Ohio State drubbed Northwestern last night. Wisconsin, not the lopsided game you might expect against Illinois. And how about South Carolina? Could they do it back-to-back -back weeks? Wow. Those dead South Carolina defense. Were... When you have a game like that defensively, and you go, wow, we just shut down a pretty good offense, you start going, okay, we found ourselves, and no one's going to score against us. Evan Conley back in at quarterback. Under pressure, holds onto the ball for an eternity and takes the sack, a loss of five. James Skalski got there and brought him down. Helped out by Tyler Davis. Really good job by Clemson with their eye discipline and not falling asleep on the backside. Sometimes you play a team that wants to commit to the run game so much, you get lazy and you get bored on the backside for easy throws. Good job by them defensively. I'd like to see Louisville get a screen here. I mean, 2-2 Atwell into slot. Can you get a screen and get him out in space against numbers? Conley again out of the pocket. Now he's back inside the five-yard line, and he is sacked again. Justin Foster. Boy, it must be fun to be a defensive coordinator. Bring a four-man rush, and Brent Venables has Foster to make the play. Watch Foster start outside 35, come inside, get hands on Caleb Chandler, and just be too strong and powerful. But that's why I wanted to screen up. I, I don't feel like you can hold up that long in just a drop back football game. It's starting to show itself. A loss of 11. Third and 26. And they'll try and buy some real estate for the punt group as Hawkins goes up the middle and gets some of that yardage back. But it will be another Louisville punt. Now Clemson's defense continues to be ad as, as advertised. Coming in as one of the best in America. And they've shut down a team that scored 62 last week. But at some point, if you're Louisville's offense, you got to try to do some things a little bit abnormal to try to take advantage of some things on the outside rather than just going at Clemson. Kick from King again. Amari Rogers all the way back to his own 25 yard line. Gets loose along the sideline and gets pounded at about the 43. Good return though from Amari Rogers. Great field position after a 59 yard punt, but an 18 yard return. And there's Terrell Tr Trinnell Troutman, who was involved in that fight earlier, to make the stop right there. That's a big hit by Troutman, but I will say this. I love the fact that he hit the strike zone right underneath the neck area as you hear it and see it full speed there, but I like the fact that he hits him in the chest. No high, no low. That's that strike zone no matter what. It was a really nice job by Troutman there. Lawrence. 
Jones, quick hitter. DeAndre Overton. Gets to midfield, pays the price, but picks up nine. It will be a whiteout in Happy Valley tonight. It'll be fun in State College from Michigan, Penn State. 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central on ABC and the ESPN app. Saturday Night Football presented by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. And we've got a couple of players down for Louisville. That's Monty Montgomery. And Kane passed down as well. Watch these guys blitz, okay? And once you shut down that pressure, look at that hole that's going to open up. You shut down that blitz, this RBO. Look at this seam that's going to be right there for Clemson's run game if he just hands it off. Sometimes they, be, they fall so in love with these RPOs. It's not a bad look. There's a good look and a bad look. Is it a good look for the RPO? No. It's not a bad look to hand the ball off and catch a seam. Sometimes these RPOs, they try to have the perfect answer, and I think it hurts them as a football team. I really do. If he hands that ball off, we've seen that play twice in the second half. It was the first play of the second half, which was an incompletion, and that play. If he hands the ball off, ETN hits his head on the goalpost. So that's on Trevor Lawrence to see that pressure coming, a free runner, and realize I've got a chance to get out the back door if I give it to ETN. Yeah, and that's why sometimes run pass options, there's a difference between a bad look. Is this a bad look for our offense? No. Is it a good look to hand the ball off? Yes. So that's why sometimes these RPOs, they try to be so perfect. If you get a run, opposite pressure one block matters you yep. shut down the stemming defensive line it's a huge crease but you tell your quarterback hey if they blitz off this nickel if they blitz off the side you can throw it there and it's like <laughs> sometimes trying to have the perfect answer hurts your offense and i think that's been the story for them this year in some of their run game well lawrence got off to a terrible start in the first quarter throwing a couple of end zone interceptions he has been better since and came pass and Monty Montgomery both able to get over to the sideline. They're going to put pass down on the injury tip. ETN right up the middle. He is loose. ETN looking for the pylon. He'll get there. Touchdown, Clemson. Travis Etienne, and he puts up similar numbers this year to what he did last year when these two teams met. Back to BT Potter this time for the point after attempt. And he sneaks it through. So now it's a three touchdown lead for the Tigers. Well, good job on the left side of our screen, JC Chalk. Shutting down Etheridge 17 there. Nice job by ETN hugging that block and then running through some arm tackles. I've talked about it all broadcast. This is a special back. And sometimes it's as easy as handing it off to him and making sure he gets going. Strong enough. And watch the left side of our screen. Let's watch T. Higgins come in here. Talk about effort. He chases down Louisville's defensive backs to get out in front to make a little extra block there. And for Louisville, they get Dorian Etheridge back off the targeting foul in the first half to be the middle linebacker here in the second half. And he had a one-on-one -on -one chance with Travis Etienne. You are not bringing Etienne down with an arm tackle. And now Javian Hawkins is back deep to receive the kick. Hassan Hall knocked out for the rest of the game, but that one not returnable for anyone. Goes through the back of the end zone. And by the way, TJ set to return from his Achilles injury with NFL primetime on deck with Boomer Sunday at 7.30. Only on ESPN Plus. All the highlights and breakdowns for the day's games. The Sunday night, Monday night games recapped by Scott Van Pelt and Joe Tessitore. To get ESPN Plus, download the app or go to ESPNplus.com. I have to think there's a pretty good chance Tom Jackson might be watching this game as he didn't have a bad career in the red and black. 
He's had, he's had a really good three-level career. Really good college football player, really good NFL player, and an outstanding analyst. This direction to 2-2 two -two Atwell. And he gets to the sideline the first time we've seen that end around to Atwell. Isaiah Simmons brings him down, but that's good for a first down. <laughs> we did a little thing in the first half where Isaiah Simmons will line up. He lined up at free safety there. So, yes, we missed it. He, he's done every other position on the field, but now we get him playing free safety. That, that, that speaks to the special athlete that he is. He's a redshirt junior, and Dabo Sweeney said that as a redshirt freshman, he wasn't a very good player. And now he has become arguably his most complete player. Hawkins, nowhere to go. Niles Pickney meets him behind the line of scrimmage for a loss of three. Do you think that's like a recruiting tool for Dabo? I mean, you know the Isaiah Simmons guy? When he got on campus, he stunk. <laughs> He's really, really good now. Well, Isaiah Simmons said his dream school was Arkansas. Right. He went there to camp. He was waiting for an offer. He basically told Brett Bielema and his staff, if you offer me, I will come. No offer. I think he made the right decision, ending up at Clemson. Evan Conley. The sideline that's broken up. Excellent coverage by Mario Goodrich. Now it's third down and 13 for Louisville. It's a really good play by Goodrich. I'd say that's the first time we've seen a Clemson defensive back make a play on the football today, right? They've been tested by some of these receivers for Louisville. Third and 13, certainly not your strength. Probably going to see a three-man rush, play some coverage. Now you see pressure coming here. Chad Smith kind of showed some pressure off the open edge. Now Louisville checks as an offense. Clemson's going to check as a defense. Blitz on third and 13. And it gets home. It's going to be another sack of Evan Conley. This time it's Chad Smith. And that should end the third quarter with a thud for that Clemson defense. They were coming off one side, called it the other side. Clemson's defense. He's in Taco Bell is celebrating student sections and passionate fans like these by awarding the Liv Moss Student Section of the Year. The Louisville Student Section already on the national watch list. Head to ESPN.com slash Taco Bell to see if your school can compete and get the committee's attention. Use the hashtag Liv Moss Student Section. There has not been too much offensively to cheer about today for the Cardinals group. Amari Rogers back deep to receive another Mason King punt as we start the fourth quarter with a wobbly kick to the sideline it will be good field position again for Clemson and they have a workhorse running back in Travis Etienne to flip the game such a physical runner at 210 pounds breaking tackles stiff arming people and we see the long speed a couple times today if you let him get out in the open field after some of those missed tackles, it'll lead to long runs for this Clemson offense led by ETN. Travis ETN has 179 yards rushing. <laughs> 119 of his 179 after contact. Mm. They just can't bring him down. This time it's Lynn J. Dixon. He picks up three. Game pass, shaking off the previous injury, gets back in the game and comes up to make the tackle. Lynn, Lynn J. Dixon originally committed to Tennessee because Clemson was after Zamir White, who ended up at Georgia. And when Zamir White made that call, and the scholarship opened up, and Lynn J. Dixon decided this was the orange he wanted to wear. It's a first down catch for the freshman Davis Allen. Thirteen and a half per carry. Not bad. It's a pretty good stat line. Maybe pop him right back into some Heisman conversation after a big afternoon. I think it's going to be a really important six, seven week stretch for him as well. For this offense as well to get him going. Heading into their back end of the season and potential playoff. 
Cornell Powell takes a low throw from Trevor Lawrence. Couldn't scoop it up. Let's check in with Cassidy. All right, let's take a look at one of AT&T's best performances. Number nine, Florida in a battle with South Carolina. Gators down 2017 on fourth down. Kyle Trask to Freddie Swain, who lays out and crosses the rainy goal line to take the 24-20 lead in the fourth quarter. This one over on ESPN. Bob, Dan, back to you. South Carolina trying to play spoiler back-to-back -back weeks in the SEC. This time, Overton is able to get free and pick up a first down for the Louisville 32. That's a gain of 18. It's another one of those RPOs. It's the same one we drew up last quarter. And I think they got to look at it because if, if Trevor Lawrence hands that off, Lynn J. Dixon is still running there. And I know it's a good completion, but you got to look at that stuff for your offense. Can you be more efficient with it? Well, speaking of still running, and now pulling up lame is ETN. Oh, that is not what a Clemson fan wants to see. Just at the end of the run, he comes up hobbled and is favoring the left leg. Well, and I just... Where the hand goes, the hand went right towards that hamstring area, and that's what I, you know, you never know if it could be a potential cramp or something, but never good to see the hand go down to that area. 192 yards now for Travis Etienne. Lawrence avoids the rush. He's going to tuck it under, get to the 10-yard line and run out of bounds. Look at McFadden right here. Jordan McFadden, the 300-pounder. Throw him the screen. He's got some space. That's how you get athletes out in space. Well, big tackle. He's got to be thinking, if not now, when? If you're not calling my number there, when will I ever touch it? Pitch and catch and a walk-in touchdown for Cornell Powell. Another touchdown pass for Trevor Lawrence. And Clemson is now pouring it on here at Louisville. Much better and clean half for this Clemson offense. Had some decent drives, scored some touchdowns, but it's been clean. 31-3, Dabo Sweeney's team on second with 13 games won in a row. So his dominant streak on its way to 22 in a row. And this will also be their 10th consecutive true road win and their 16th consecutive regular season ACC win. As we take a look at today's Pacific Life game summary. And this will also be Clemson's potentially 36th consecutive win on a Saturday, which is Stupid. really as dumb as a stat yeah. could be, but we figured we'd just throw that one out there as Travis Etienne, 192 yards and a touchdown as he puts up another huge game against the Louisville defense. We can't believe you got that 36 Saturdays in there. High snap. Evan Conley under pressure. And he's going to hoist it to the sideline and throw it away. That should, that's, that's got to be lineman downfield there. That might be what Dabo Sweeney's asking about. He's out on the sideline, off the Clemson sideline with the official. Wanted to know why a flag didn't get thrown. Play action for Conley. Into double coverage. Knocked away. Well done by Nolan Turner as he jumped in front of Seth Dawkins. And Conley has to pick himself up off the, the turf again. Mario Goodrich shaken up on the play. So he heads over to the Clemson sideline. 
And Dabo still seems to be trying to work those officials after that first first that first down play that probably should have been a legal man downfield. Well, he never stops coaching. Yeah. He can't, regardless of the score, because Clemson is expected to win like this every mm -hmm. week. And that's, I, th I think that's such an unspoken challenge. Again, these are 18 to 22-year-old kids trying to get them to focus every single time they're on the field. An interception thrown by Conley down the sideline, picked off by Terrell. A.J. Terrell reverses field. Gets a block. And he's out of bounds at the 25-yard line of Louisville. Again, Evan Conley took a shot, just threw a prayer down the sideline. And A.J. Terrell with his first interception of the season. Justin Foster waffled Conley as he let go of the ball. Hopefully Conley's okay. Foster did a really good job on that stunt coming inside. And Terrell just playing high on that receiver. Conley essentially trying to just take a shot, throws it up to him. It's good to see him running off that field after that big hat, big hit from Justin Foster. And barring some type of explosion by Louisville, it'll be another offense at the Tigers in the fourth quarter to a 31-3 lead. As Trevor Lawrence has responded after a two interception start with three touchdown passes, 217 yards. Having a problem with the referee microphone, they did just make or attempt to make the announcement as to whether or not this should have been targeting on Justin Foster. As Foster got Evan Conley right on the chin as Conley is in the act of throwing, which makes him a defenseless player. And it looks like they are not calling this targeting which I have to say is a surprise because Conley busted up his lip on that hit. Let's see if we do have a microphone that is now working for our referee. I think they already attempted to make the announcement. And I'm very surprised that they didn't go with a targeting call there, Dan, because forcible contact to the head or neck area of a defenseless player, and when you're the quarterback in that prone position throwing, you are defenseless. So it looks like Foster got away with one. Long throw down the sideline, into the end zone. T. Higgins out of bounds. He thought he got a foot down as Trevor Lawrence was looking for touchdown pass number four. Higgins still thinks it's a touchdown. I think it's a touchdown, too. I think Higgins gets his toes down. Watch as he extends in the right foot and the left foot down there, right there. That was the ball secured. Is there a little bit of movement as his body hits the ground? Certainly looked like he had his feet down there and an incredible catch. And now they're going to buzz, and replay will take a look at that play just before the snap. The ruling on the field is an incomplete pass. The previous play is under further review. Well, that would be the first catch of the day for T. Higgins if it stands up. And all those Clemson fans, this happened right in their corner of the stadium. Foot is and, down. And he's definitely got that, that back move. left toe down. You're right. And that little bobble as he goes out of bounds. Did he have complete control of the football before he fell out of bounds? What athleticism, though, to even get his hand on the ball. I think if it was called to catch, it'd be hard to overturn. And I think it's called an incomplete pass, and it's going to be hard to overturn because there is just the slightest little movement of a football. We could give it to him strictly because it was an incredible catch. You think that's what the conversation is in the replay booth? It's probably an incomplete pass, but boy, that was really cool looking. Let's give it to him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think there's a better way to write a rule. Right. If it looks cool enough, then it should be a catch. Reward the young man for incredible effort and talent and skill. Oh, this is a heck of a group of receivers that Trevor Lawrence has to throw the football to. And he's got ETN going on all cylinders. And he can throw it to Justin Ross, T. Higgins, Amari Rogers, 
and Gata made a great catch in the back of the end zone for one of those touchdowns they as well three, today. Yeah. Three young freshmen coming. Plenty just, of weapons. It's the extension. Like, that's so hard, dude. You're running as a receiver. The ball's thrown behind you. You got to gather yourself, track the football, turn your body, go fully extended, and try and make a catch. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Second down. Guys, I'll tell you what, even though it wasn't a touchdown, I bet Antonis would still have given him a Hot Wheels car for that play there. <laughs> That's how he actually came to love football. He was all about basketball growing up, but his Aunt Denise said, you know what, I want you to play football, and if you score a touchdown, every time I'll give you a Hot Wheels. He went out, he scored three of them, he got his three Hot Wheels, and uh, look at how it's paid off. So I think he'd get one even there. Hot Wheels, that was where I was at when we were growing up as T. Higgins catches the tunnel screen here. There's his first catch, and he picks up about four yards. G.G. Robinson on the stop. Louisville in the second half hasn't crossed the 50. Lawrence, long throw to the sideline, and the catch is made by T.J. Chase. And it will be first and goal just inside the 10. Gain of 13. And that play's probably the one, one of the examples of just the talent of Trevor Lawrence. Like, you're on the right hash, third down, you get rotation by a secondary all the way to the field. That's the only place you could throw the football, and he puts his foot in the ground and drives it to the sideline, showing off vision, accuracy, timing, and arm strength. Lawrence spun down after a gain of a half yard. Quinn Head made the tackle for Louisville. You want Trevor Lawrence taking any more hits in this game if you can avoid it? I, I might write Dabo a letter. Just be like, hey, you know, can we avoid this kid carrying the ball for 10 times in a ball game? I like situational stuff, third and shorts, red zones, where it pays off, but I don't think first down runs, especially in the open field, are worthy of some of the hits that can potentially add up throughout the season. Wrencher breaks a tackle, and Darian Wrencher into the end zone. Another Clemson touchdown. First career touchdown for Darian Wrencher. And it's 38 to 3. Pouring it on in the second half. Clemson has Wrencher. Clemson be a part of the college football playoff for the fifth consecutive year. Well, they keep on running scores up like this, even in the struggling ACC. You better believe it. As the Louisville group that thought their team was going to hang in there today. They have seen it come apart at the seams in the second half. And Dan, a big reason why is Trevor Lawrence responding from the two early interceptions to play very well in the second half. Yeah, that first one's an overly aggressive throw and miscommunication with his receiver. This next one, stay patient, take a check down when teams play coverage, but he came back to your point, Bob. A great high ball to Ngata down in the red zone. This one, to me, you got bailed out by a great play by your receiver. And then a nice crisscross out route to Powell. Some really good highs and some lows, but great coaching and teaching moments. Coach to quarterback. This is all Trevor Lawrence has basically been doing his whole life as Evan Conley goes back to work. And hands one off to Javian Hawkins, who finds a lane. Gets out close to midfield, steps out of his own 44. And it's good to see Travis Etienne with a smile on his face. Hopefully that was just a cramp when he pulled up late yeah. and had to go out of the game. That doesn't look like a guy that's worried about a pulled hamstring. I think if you're Clemson and Dabo Swinney, you're walking away with a lot of good things for your offense, right? Like, to your point, your quarterback, who still is young, 
Rebounded from a rough start. Your offensive line played outstanding, certainly in the run game. ETN got going. So there's a lot of good that they're going to be able to point to their offense and coach off of. And then a lot of, hey, we got to do this better when we're playing maybe a stiffer opponent, right? A tougher team. Good run by Hawkins. Well, Trevor Lawrence, when he was in eighth grade, started practicing with the high school varsity in spring, knowing that that fall he would be a ninth grader. They had a senior starting quarterback. He said, no problem. I'll take that guy on. And started for his high school as a freshman, started all four years, and went 52-2. and two. And then came to Clemson as part of a very deep group. Kelly Bryant at quarterback. And, of course, Dabo Sweeney said, well, if you come here, yep. you're going to be in a deep quarterback group. He said, no problem. I got that. I got that. Yeah. And five games into his freshman year, took over, and all he did was lead him to a national championship. And now he is undefeated in his career as a quarterback at Clemson and on the ACC Network in the primetime game. They'll take on Boston College next Saturday night at 7.30. picks up two it'll be third down and long after the year that Lawrence had last year because of you know me being readily out of the NFL and covering a lot of it for ESPN like I would get a call every other day or a tech what do you think about the Lawrence kid and I just told people listen if he could come out this year he would be the number one pick run away if he could come out this year, he would be the runaway number one pick. No He's doubt. going to be the number one pick in the NFL draft whenever he chooses to go and take that next step. He's that outstanding of a player. Has he made some mistakes? Yes. But he has set the bar so exceptionally high for his play that we never think, oh, man, that was just a bad read by that quarterback. Blitz. Conley escapes and runs for a first down. Now, J.B. and Hawkins is up to 94 yards rushing in the game, and it has been quite a while since Clemson's defense allowed a 100-yard rusher against it. The longest active streak in FBS, 27 consecutive games that Clemson's defense has gone without allowing an opposing 100-yard rusher. And I promise you those coaches know that, and I promise you they're conscious of it right now as well. Hawkins at home averages 139 yards per game. He's going to try one here, and he's going to pick up 100 more inside the 20 with a stiff arm. Out of bounds inside the six-yard line. You mentioned a little bit in the third quarter that it was an important moment for Satterfield in this Louisville program because in the past maybe it would blow up. Now, this score has gotten out of hand, but it is not because of lack of effort, right? And you're seeing it on this drive. I think Louisville has to sit back and look at this job that Scott Satterfield has done and feel so good about not only where their football team is now, but where it's headed in the future. I loved our time with him yesterday, and I think this is going to be a program that bounces back very quickly. Hawkins gets to the five-yard line. His message to his players is every bit as much, if not more, about culture and discipline and flipping the script than it is about X's and O's and wins this year. He said, we're down 22 scholarship guys from when we first arrived. And he said, that's fine, because we told our guys, this is the way it's going to be, and you're either all in or you're out. It's going to be a hard camp. It's going to be physical. These are going to be the demands that we're going to put on you. And if you can't live up to those demands, then you might as well go. And since they arrived, 22 guys have gone. And he didn't have a problem with that. Flags down on the snap here. It'll be a false start. Offense, number 60. Five-yard penalty. Second half. And guys, the culture Satterfield's trying to create at Louisville really similar to what they're doing at Clemson. And he actually visited Clemson several times when he was at Appalachian State, but that's not where he picked up this idea of coaching from love and not fear. They were doing it already at App State. He said it just really confirmed for him that it can work, that you can win, even at a high level, by coaching out of love and not out of fear. He said, look, there's no re reason for guys to walk around this building all the time like it's fourth and one. When you don't do that, that's what makes guys show up here when they don't have to be here. It puts a bounce in their steps, and he's really just changed the vibe around this Louisville program. Hawkins looking for a cutback lane and finds one down inside the five. 
to about the three and a half yard line. They've got a dry erase board yeah. in the front of their complex. They call it the can't get right board. And that is, I mean, if you're late for a meeting, if you miss breakfast, can't get right, man. if you sleep in and don't get to a team meal on time, they put your name on the board and everybody in the entire football organization knows you can't get right. As we have an injury timeout on the field, 5.19 to go. Be an app. Xavier Kelly, the injured Tiger, taken off the field. And a handoff into the end zone goes J.B. and Hawkins. So it took until we had about five minutes to go in the game for Louisville to find the end zone, but they have gotten home with 5.10 to go. fourth rushing touchdown this season. First of the day for Louisville. And they find the end zone. We check in again with Cassidy Hubbard. And Bob, number six, Wisconsin getting all the fight from the Illini. Here, Brandon Peters finds Josh Amata Bebe. Now, Wisconsin with just a two-point lead with about 35 seconds to go. And coming up on ABC, some Pac-12 afternoon, Jacob Eason and number 12, Oregon, at number 25, Washington, 3.30 Eastern on ABC or the ESPN app. Guys? Very interesting, Cassidy. As a few weeks ago, Clemson played a game where they won by the skin yeah. of their teeth, 21-20, on the road against North Carolina, and dropped a couple they of spots stayed. in the polls. Well, they were number one at the time. Now yeah. they're down to number three. Yep. If you even win a close, hard-fought game like that on the road against a team like Illinois, what does that do to Wisconsin? Or is there a little more respect given collectively from voters to the Big Ten than there is to the ACC? Yeah, I mean, that could be part of it, maybe because the Big Ten has a couple more teams that are ranked in the top ten. Uh, Listen, they've got a, more than a couple winning more. Winning college football games is hard every week. I don't care who you are. That's why I get so mad when people kill Clemson because, oh, you know, they've won 354 games in a row, but it's in the ACC. <laughs> like, it's hard to win college football games. They're 18, 19, 20, 21-year-old kids. That is hard, and you're going to get, when you're Wisconsin, when you're Clemson, when you're Alabama, when you're, you're getting everybody's absolute best haymaker. And if you don't show up, it's gonna be a good ball game. And so, that's why I never knock a team for finding ways to win. If it's a repetitive behavior, and you're not playing good football, then it's a conversation. But win the games you're not supposed to. Win the game you shouldn't. Here's the problem for Clemson. There is no such game. Correct. There's no such game. Win. Not even close to there being a game that they win, and they're not supposed to. Right. Win the game you, sh you should it, not supposed to. Chase Bryce takes over at quarterback for Trevor Lawrence. To try and close this game out. And they will go up the middle with Ches Malusi, true freshman from Naples, Florida, who gets a chance to play here in the last five minutes. And really, the only game that's left for Clemson that they are not at least nine out of ten percentage-wise to win is at the end of the season when they take on South Carolina in the Palmetto rivalry game. That's going to be Thanksgiving weekend. That game this year is in Columbia. So that makes it a little bit yeah, more of a challenge nice sure. for Clemson. And looked like South Carolina gave Florida all they could handle for the better part of three and a half quarters today. But everybody that they play the rest of the way in the ACC, they are predicted to just steamroll. Well, listen, I... I I think the South Carolina game is certainly a lot more intriguing after we saw them last week, yep. to your point, Florida. But at the end of the day, and this is the, we've seen Wisconsin, right, this year. Do we think Wisconsin is one of the four, five, six, seven best football teams in the country? I do. Yeah, I would say if, if you expand it to the top six or seven, yes, I think they're accurately ranked. And Clemson is right in that mix as well. I would put Clemson in the top four. I think they're accurately ranked as well. And the great thing is, we are going to know at some point, right? Like, Wisconsin's going to play their schedule, and they're going to have their chance to prove their point to get in the top four. Clemson's going to 
play their schedule. I'd also point out to since 2013, for everyone who wants to bash Clemson and not playing everybody, they're 11 and three against Alabama, Auburn, Georgia, Oklahoma, Ohio State, and Notre Dame. They're 11 and three against them. And whenever they've been doubted, they have generally speaking so like risen up and beaten the teams that they were doubted when compared to. Rice with a throw to the sideline. And he finds DeAndre Overton. I think this kid Chase Bryce is a good player too. I remember that Syracuse game last year, right? Came in fourth and seven, but I like the way, I mean, every time he gets his opportunity to play, he plays well. Michael Dukes driven back at the line. You guys were talking about how Clemson just, you know, continues to win. And I love that they don't take it for granted, right? Like, I talked to Travis Etienne. I said, what is the, f the best part of the way Coach Sweeney runs this program? He does things differently in a lot of ways than a lot of head coaches. And the first thing he said, he said, he lets us enjoy the wins. It doesn't matter by how much or how little, like that UNC game. We celebrate them, we enjoy them, and we have fun. He said, it's just so much fun with this team. The thing that makes football more unique than any other sport is the easy part is the game. The hard part is the practice. You only get 12 games, 13 games. If you're going to work January offseason, February offseason, you go all the way through the year and you put all this time in, you practice throughout the week, and then you win and you're not going to enjoy it, that, that, there, there's an issue there. Like, you only get so many opportunities to reap the reward of your work and then enjoy that. And I think that's outstanding that Dabo emphasizes that for their program. Flag out as Bryce hoists one towards the end zone to Frank Laxon and Cornelius Sturgill. Looks like we'll be called for interference. Defense, number six, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Well, the two teams I think that are most inter interesting mm -hmm. are Clemson and Notre Dame. Okay. Those are two teams that are both in the top eight, they comfortably inside the top ten, that don't really play anybody else that's going to be that litmus test game. You know, Notre Dame plays Michigan. Right. That's about the best they've got left. Clemson plays South Carolina and whoever they will see in the ACC championship game, which they'll probably be favored by three, maybe four touchdowns right. to win. As Michael Dukes carries one down to the 15-yard line. Again, let's check in with Cassidy. Bob, after a late Wisconsin interception, Illinois got themselves in field goal position, down two, four seconds left on the clock. James McCourt from 39 yards out. Kick is good, and Wisconsin gets their first loss of the season, upset 24-23 by Illinois. Bob, Dan, back to you. So that's the second consecutive week because we last week watched South Carolina go to Georgia and beat the dogs as a top four team. And now Wisconsin, ranked sixth in the country, loses at Illinois. That's a shocker. Wow. Wow. And, and we continue to have this conversation, right? You, Wisconsin needed to find a way to win that game when they probably shouldn't. I don't know the stats of turnovers and whatnot. And they didn't, and that's why I'm not going to knock Clemson, because they continue to find ways to win football games, and a lot of them are blowouts. And they continue to pad their lead as Malusi goes up the middle for a touchdown. Not too bad when you bring guys off the bench and they've got this type of an opening to run through. Wow. <laughs> Look at the great vision by Malusi. I mean, that is that is uh, about as easy it'll ever get at any level of football. Outstanding job by an offensive line, and that's part of this program too, right? A lot of guys play. That's why they don't struggle with having to replace stars that leave because they get guys reps and there's a really good level of development to their players. I'm here to back Clemson, man. I, I am here to fight anyone who wants to bash Clemson. Why are you looking at me? I'm just... I don't want to fight. Get, get casually looking around our booth. I think Clemson is pretty good, too. I am here to... 
Anybody who wants to sit here and bash the team that's won a bunch of games <laughs> in a row and two straight, two national titles out of three years and continues to do it but have fun doing it, I'll back them. Wisconsin next week plays Ohio State on the road. It's going to be a big time test for Ohio State, right? Like, we think Wisconsin's a really good or, team. Or if Wisconsin Done. actually did find a way to win that game, yeah. would they be able, if they ran the table, to still be in the playoff with a loss against Illinois on their resume? And if now, begins. Alabama's going to play LSU. You've got the entire SEC to shake out. And then you start to get into debates, and this is where it gets hairy inside, potentially that committee room. Let's say Alabama and LSU play okay. just a death struggle and one team beats the other by three. Okay. You know, wh where does that loss yeah. factor in? Because and, we've had that before in the does SEC. Does Alabama win the SEC title then? Either way. But, Louis, uh, but LSU's loss is only a close game. To right. Alabama. There's oh so much that could that's happen. That's great, though. So that, that's why with Clemson, they have to look at this as we literally have no margin for error. Correct, yeah. We have to run the table. We must be an undefeated team. And that's a good point. Like, they can't have an off week. Not an off week. But teams in other conferences that people deem more competitive and more difficult, you can potentially have a slip up, lose, and because of that difficult conference and schedule and strength of schedule, you can get back into the Correct. conversation. Clemson can't. They are, they are, if they get knocked out, it's done. If Wisconsin beats Ohio State next week, if they win the Big Ten championship game, say against a Penn State or it's something. It's a reasonable way. And they've got a couple of wins against teams that are also ranked in the top six or seven. Mm -hmm. Well, then the committee might say, all right, you slipped up once, but look at these other mm -hmm. resume building wins that you've got. There are no opportunities like that for Clemson. Yeah, and that's, I, I don't think, again, I don't think that we talk about that enough. Like, how hard it is to get your guys to focus every Saturday to make sure that they better bring their A game because you know you know the other teams bringing their A game, right? Clemson might be the only team in the country that has to do that. Well, they had their A game today, certainly in the second half as they pull away from Louisville. For Dan Orlovsky and Allison Williams, I'm Bob.